Why are you so tense, god damn it? Because I don't know what I'm doing! Calm down. Hey guys, it's Philly Cuts. Check out my rabbit ears. I just got done watching Microsoft's E3 press conference at the Galen Center at USC in LA. And I must say, it was an interesting conference. It wasn't as connect heavy as I thought it was going to be. But they did show um, a bunch of new games, and I think that that was what was good about this conference this time around, is that it seemed to showcase more games toward the hardcore gamer rather than the casual gaming market like last year's uh, E3, which was very, 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 very connect heavy. So the show started out with Don Matrick coming out and he informs the audience that Xbox is now not only the number one selling console in North America but also the entire world. And that's great but what will Xbox do to continue this dominance, continue being on top in the sales numbers game? They opened the show big with Halo 4. It looked pretty good. I mean it looked like Halo. It started out in a jungle sequence. Kind of reminded me a lot of how Halo 3 started out, where it started out in the jungle sequence, but it looked much, much better. And you're introduced to a new um, alien race, which reminded me quite a bit of the Predator from the Predator movies. But it was like a mechanized creature, Predator-looking creature. Had a mask that opened up. There was also some introductions to a new weapon. And I don't really want to get too much into the details on that, but it looked like Halo. Uh, another cool game that they showed, Ubisoft came out next and showed a little bit of the new Splinter Cell Blacklist. Looks really good. Sam Fisher's never looked better. It looked highly choreographed, his killing sequences, and he went all Prince of Persia on us too, scaling up a wall very elegantly. So it was interesting to, to note that. Looks like there's going to be a lot of, you know, platforming aspects this time around, but we'll see. Also, there was a cool connect feature where you could distract an enemy by calling out to them, Hey you! And it would distract the enemy, and then you could go in for the silent kill. I thought that was interesting. I mean, not something that would make me be like, Oh my God, did you see that? Look at that. I gotta go get this game now. But it was interesting to see how they've incorporated the connect a little bit into that game. Next, EA Sports came out and piggybacked on that Connect voice recognition feature showing in the new FIFA 13 and the new Madden 13 mainly with play calling and substitution making. So you can make plays on the fly, you know, you're on the line in the football game, you could call an audible with your voice. Or you can substitute a player in, like a running back or something, sub out, sub in a running back with your voice. Same thing with FIFA 13. Also in FIFA 13, if you were unhappy with a call that the ref did, you could, you know, voice your dissension and the, the referee will actually recognize you. So that's kind of cool. A new thing where you actually have, you know, interactivity with the ref. Refs go live. Again, I'll have to see how it goes. I'm always a little nervous with voice recognition stuff just from smartphones and whatnot. They don't always register what you say, and I could just see that being really, really frustrating in your game. That if this thing doesn't work on point and work accurately, it's just going to be a nightmare. Okay, and then Phil Spencer came out, showed a trailer for Gears of War Judgment. They didn't really show too much. There wasn't really any gameplay. It was just a bunch of cutscenes. Looks really good, and they say that it's coming out in 2013. They didn't really give too much information. It was just like a teaser. Okay, and then Yusuf Medho came out. He's the head of marketing and strategy for Xbox. He announced that Kinect is going to have um, more features with voice recognition search. You can search things by genre, like a movie. You could say Xbox, search, horror movie, and a bunch of horror movies will come up, and then you could pick. Eh, that's okay. He also announced that Bing Voice Search will support an additional 12 languages throughout the world. He also announced 35 new entertainment partners and he highlighted four. He gave a big warm welcome to Nickelodeon, Paramount Movies, for gamers, Machinima, and Univision. He also made a really big announcement for sports. He announced that ESPN would now be streaming live 24 hours on Xbox. If I heard him correctly, uh, you would get your ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN3, ESPN U. Also, they made a big, huge announcement that uh, the NBA will be on Xbox now. So that's a subscription service. I think it's probably around $25 to $30 a month. 
They also are going to have NHL subscription service. So, more sports, more variety. I think it's cool. Um, for someone like me who doesn't have cable, because I think most of the stuff that's on cable is crap, it's an option for me, and I've been an MLB subscriber on my PS3 for three years, so hopefully with the hockey package, they will implement an option where you can buy the service month to month, as opposed to having to pay a lump fee, I believe $179 a year, you can only have that one payment option. They also talked about Xbox Live Music, which is a new service they're going to offer, and they're touting a library of over 30 million tracks. So I guess they're trying to go up against iTunes. We'll see how that goes. Usually when Microsoft goes up against Apple, it doesn't really work out as well as planned. I mean, the Zoom wasn't exactly an iPod breaker. Mark Witten came out, he's the head of the Xbox Live division, and informed us that Xbox Live Internet Explorer will now be available on our Xboxes. The funny thing is, I must note that as soon as he made that announcement, the stream went out. And I thought it was just my TV, my service, but I guess apparently it went down. The stream went down for the E3 show, right, when he makes an announcement that they're gonna have Internet Explorer on the Xbox. I just thought that was kind of funny. Hopefully it's not a bad omen of things to come. Witten also announced the new Xbox Smart Glass app. Say you're watching a movie on your phone, your laptop, your tablet. You can migrate that movie over to your Xbox at exactly the same spot with just a few steps few connect voice recognition steps. I thought that was pretty cool. The Smart Glass also has some incorporation features that you can use with games. They showed a cool thing with Madden where you could be playing Madden on your TV and you could have your playbook on your phone. It was really neat. Kind of reminded me that they were sort of biting off of the week. Hey, we, you, you know, anything you can do, I can do better. We'll have to see. I think it is pretty cool if you are playing some sports games with friends, you know, you always want to be able to disguise your plays and I think that this would make it a lot more fluid and with smart glass you could also use your phone as a remote control to control your Xbox which is similar to the Xbox Live companion app that they have now. Piggybacking off of the theme where I believe that Xbox was kind of biting off the Wii U there were some games that they did showcase that also kind of seemed to be biting off of other games. One game that I was pretty surprised about was Tomb Raider. It looked really good. They showed a nice action sequence in that gameplay sequence kind of reminded me an awful lot of Uncharted, the Uncharted series, and that's one of my favorite all-time series. I also have a PS3, um, but Tomb Raider really, really looked good. Did look kind of biting off of um, Uncharted, but I'm willing to give it a chance. Looks like to be a, a more darker theme Tomb Raider. It didn't seem as campy. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. Um, another game that they showed, Capcom came out and they showcased Resident Evil 6. All I can say about that is they've really, really gone far off the path of survival horror based on the clip that they showed. It was just so over the top action oriented. It didn't have any scary elements at all in it. It just surprises me how far that Resident Evil has really detracted from its roots of survival horror. And you know, this has been in the making for quite some time. Um, I would argue that it started even with Resident Evil 4, and it's just progressively gotten away from the survival horror aspect into a more action-oriented theme. And it's become less and less and less scary along the way. So this, the expo ended with Don Matrix coming out again and they showcased Black Ops 2. It takes place in the future, 2025. Um, there was an interesting sequence at one point where you do get into a fighter jet, an FA-38 fighter jet. And that looked pretty cool. That looked pretty badass to me. So I don't think they've ever had that had that in the series, have they? Where you could go into a jet, so. But overall, I think it was, it was an okay showing for Microsoft. It was nice that they returned back to games as opposed to last year's E3, which I thought was just horrendous. It was just so driven towards the casual gamer and it was so connect heavy and connect focused that it was nice to see kind of a return to showcasing more games, you know, that aren't so casual. I'm anxiously waiting to see what PS3 shows tonight. 
I was really, really surprised that Xbox didn't even have a teaser or anything for, you know, a next generation console. But, I guess there is a lot of life left in these consoles, so we'll have to wait and see. Alright guys, let me know what you thought of the conference, what you thought the best moment was, and thanks for watching. Peace.